Shalom, beloved. Hallelujah. We are going to have another service again today. But uh, there are two notes that I need again to mention. First is because we are going to have our Holy Communion later. So would you prepare uh, your bread and your drink that comes with the Holy Communion? If you don't have the usual uh, bread and drink, you can just find a colored liquid and some crackers. Yeah. And the second note is that on your screen, on the YouTube screen, there is a comment section. You could write down your prayer request over there. And we will pray for you and then we will update anything that is, that is uh, related to that on that comment section. Hallelujah. So let us prepare our hearts and join this uh, wonderful online service. But before, let us just pray. Father God, we thank you again today. We are coming together. Even though this is online service, we know that you are with us, Lord. Bless your children wherever they are. As we worship you, as we listen to your word, and as we join in the Holy Communion, you touch us, Lord. You bless us and you uh, heal us, transform us, Lord. Bless your children, I pray. Bless your children. Do something miraculous today, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Amen. Enjoy the service. Hallelujah.
Jesus, face 
Hallelujah. It's time for us to give our offerings. Uh, beloved, there is uh, QR codes and account number on your screen. You can use that to transfer your gifts, your tithe, your offering, uh, whatever it may be. And let us give with a joyful heart because we know that God has given us so very much. Hallelujah. But before we give, let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We know that you have blessed us so much, Lord. Now, it is an opportunity for, for opportunity for us to give now. Lord, we want to give a joyful heart. We know that you've been good to us. And teach us this day that we are going to use whatever you have entrusted us for your glory only and to show our love to others also. Thank you, God. We are going to give and we give with a joyful heart in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us now declare our offering. One, two, three. When we bring our offerings, we believe that the gates of heaven are open and the blessings of the Lord are poured out. I have a better business, job, and education. Profit, bonus, and assets will be multiplied. Amen. God will bring all and new customers to me. All bills will be paid off. I own a house on earth and in heaven. Receiving gifts, surprises, and rewards. A soulmate will be given for those who are single. Amen, amen. There is no barren person in our midst, and families are living in harmonies. All enemies, sickness, and loss will be rebuked from our lives, families, jobs, and our businesses. This is the time to give the offering in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. 
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is so sing Shalom all, hallelujah. Nice to see, you again this, to see you again this week. Before we start our sermon today, let's just pray one, one more time. Thank you, God. Our Father God, that we believe and worship in Jesus' name, thank you that we can have this online service again today. We have worshiped you and sing you praises. Lord, we are about to listen to your word. Bless your children, I pray. Wherever we are at the moment, bless your children. Holy Spirit, speak to your children and do something great today. Do something miraculous today to your people. Restore us again. Touch us again. Strengthen us again, Lord. And we promise to give you all the honor, the glory, only unto Jesus' name, our Lord, our Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're about to talk for a short uh, moment about uh, still in the series of Heaven on Earth. Uh, this is actually the continuation of uh, the fifth series, which is the Word of God. And today we are going to talk about the perspective. So the last time we talked about the Word of God and we discuss the uh, several views of people on the Word of God. So actually this talking is a continuation of that. So this is the perspective of how people, how believers see or view the Word of God. Yeah? Let me just recap on that. Last time we talked about it and I quoted uh, John 1 to 1, 4. This is the sermon of our senior pastor, Pastor Wirio. So in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Yeah? He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. Hallelujah. And we talked about it, uh, let me just repeat briefly, that when we see the Word of God, when we view the Word of God, and the way we see and treat the Word of God it will determine the supernatural experience that we shall experience in life. Hallelujah. You see, the Word of God is the source of our faith. It's the source of our uh, uh, faith in what God can do 
in us and through us. And it is like, like I mentioned last time in the previous series, that it is the currency of heaven. Faith is the currency of heaven. You see, let me repeat again that God is not moved by our troubles, our need, or even our disease or sicknesses. Because if God is moved by all those, there won't be any people who are sick, who are having trouble in this world. But God is moved by our faith. Hallelujah. Let me just recap the last thing that we did. First, the views on the Word of God. One is as reading materials for Christians. Yeah, some people just view that as reading materials because it contains historical uh, uh, facts and all that. But on top of that, let us see the Word of God, view the Word of God as our life manual. You see, if something is broken in our life, probably or most likely that we have ignored some of the life manuals that the Bible have declared, have stated in the Bible. So if something happened which is not really according to what we expect, of course, uh, it could be also to, to mean something good for our lives. But most of the time, if there are something which is broken, something which is not happening according to our desires in this life, probably because we have ignored the life manual, which is the Word of God. And thirdly, it, it was discussed, we discussed it as source of faith. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of Christ, the word of God. So you see, uh, uh, when we are taking the word of God, when we are feeling the word of God and we honor it and we appreciate it, uh, we give the utmost appreciation to the word of God, we know that we are actually believing in it and whatever is, it says, it will happen in our life, then we can say that this is the source of our faith. You see, life sometimes comes uh, uh, not according to our expectation. And even we try so hard, still, we cannot get what we desire. We cannot accomplish what we want. And sometimes we think about it and how can we make things right, you see. And the Bible says this, we can have faith in God who can do miracles. And by seeing the word of God as the source of our faith, we can walk in faith. And definitely by faith, we can accomplish things that even we think that is impossible, it may and it will be possible. Hallelujah. There's, that was the, the brief uh, uh, recap on what we discussed in the fifth series of Heaven on Earth. And uh, the continuation of that, which is the pers perspective, how we perceive the Word of God. Number four is an exceedingly great and precious promises. Exceedingly great and precious promises. I'm quoting uh, from 2 Peter 1, verse 4 says this, By which? have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Great, exceedingly great and precious promises, God has given that to us. So we are viewing the Word of God as exceedingly great and precious promises. Great is already very big. Exceedingly great is so, so great, beloved. And it's precious. There are precious promises that God has given to us. Why would God give all those promises to us. The Bible, I read that it contains like over 8,800 promises in there. And 7,400 and so, the promises given to mankind, to you and to me. There are so many promises. That's why it is said, exceedingly great and precious promises. God has given that to us. 
So what is the purpose of giving all those promises to us? So when we are having faith on those promises, it shall happen to you and it shall happen to me. But what is the purpose of giving great and precious promises to believers? There are two purpose, purposes for this. First is, so we may escape, quoting from that verse, so we may escape from the corruption that is in the world through lust. You see, in life, we are doing things, we are working, we are having ministry. Things sometimes is not as easy as it may seem. In fact, sometimes it is so intimidating, so hard, so difficult. And on top of that, around us, there are so many temptations that tempt you and me through lust. And how can we escape that? And uh, very first that we just mentioned just now, if we are clinging to or fixing our eyes to the promises of God, to the exceedingly great and precious promises of God to us, we see that and we know that when we see around us, there are so many difficult things around us, there are so many intimidating uh, or challenging times towards us, or even there are so many temptations that lure us that times through our lives, we can see the promise, the exceedingly great promise, the exceedingly great promise of God, the precious promise of God. We can look at that and we can say, oh, whatever happens around me, even though it's hard, even though it's difficult, even though I'm being tempted, but I'm fixing my eyes on the promise of God, then we can, I can, you can escape from that corruption, beloved. Hallelujah. So fix your eyes on the promise of God. Then you're not going to be tempted by all these temporary things, you see? Temporary uh, situation. Because we are fixing on the eternal promise of God. And secondly, so that we may be partakers of the divine nature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says this, if we are in Christ, we are a new creation. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in fact, the Bible also says that we are co heir with Christ. Christ has died on the cross and all power in heaven and on earth has been given to our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are co heir It means that we are going to inherit all the promise of God. All the eternal promise of God is going to be uh, given to you and to me because we are co heirs with Christ. And how do we get that? How do we? Because we see all these promises. It means that all, all, watch this, all who are going to inherit the inheritance of a parent, of a father, they, they must be their children. You see, when we are being saved, we are made to become a new creation, having a divine nature. We are given the power to be the children of God. That promises made us to be coherent. That promises made us to be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. So wonderful, so wonderful. Those are the great, exceedingly, exceedingly great and precious promise of God. And there are so many of them. But I would like to talk about today about the exceedingly great promise of God, especially about in the end times, what it is. Yeah, let me just read from Acts 15, 16 to 17. It says this. This is the word of God, 16. After this, I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruin and I will set it up, 17. So that what? So that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Tabernacle of David, rebuilding the tabernacle of David. There is tabernacle of Moses, tabernacle of David, and the temple of Solomon. Yeah? 
But God mentioned this. Why? Because tabernacle is talking about intimacy with God. It's talking about worshiping God. You know, David, King David decided when he built that tabernacle that there will be 24 hours, seven days a week, worship in that tabernacle. So he met schedules, all the Levites, you know, all the worshipers, the musicians, take time, take turns to worship in there. That is what going to heaven, to happen in heaven. That is the picture of heaven, beloved. So God is going to restore that. God is going to rebuild the tabernacle of David. So what is, in our church, we define this rebuilding tabernacle of David as this. What is rebuilding tabernacle of David? They are mighty warriors of God who have a lifestyles of prayer, praise, and worship corporately, day and night, who do the will of the Father in this age. Please pay attention on this. I know probably most of you have listened to this, have heard this before, but take it with faith that you and I are mighty warriors, that you and I are people of God who have lifestyle of prayer, praise and worship corporately day and night, and then we are doing the will of God, the will of the Father in this age. Let's look at it one by one. Mighty warriors, it is kind of teaching now. Mighty warriors are who? Those who are ready for spiritual warfare. So mighty warriors are those who are always watchful, ready. When the enemy comes, they're not going to say, oh, hang on, hang on, let me just put on my makeup. <laughs> let me just go and have pray and fasting for three days and then I'll do the, the, the battle. No, they are ready all the time. When troubles comes, when intimidation comes, when enemy comes, or people say, oh, pastor, oh, brother, I have a problem. My, my, my family is just happened to, uh, to be demon-possessed just now. Can you come? You know, oh, all right, I, 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 I think I need to pray for a few hours to go there. No, mighty warriors, our warriors will say that, oh, okay, I'm ready anytime, anywhere, anyhow. They are ready for spiritual warfare. Why? Because they are mighty warriors. And what is else? What else? Those who live in holiness. You see, holiness is not, it's not just about not committing sin. Because holiness, the original word is talking about being separated, sanctified, children of God. We are not being separated from the world. We are still in the world, but we are different. Because we are walking in the plan of God. We are walking in the promise of God. So we are actually uh, offering our life. Whatever we do, it's not just about working or living or ministering in the church. Whatever is our calling in life. But we are offering our life as a dedication to glorify God for His glory. That is talking about holiness. So mighty warriors is ready for anything. When God said to them, you leave this and then you go there and then we go. They are ready. They are ready because they know that their life is already being sanctified. It is being uh, 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 separated for God's glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that is the meaning of uh, mighty warriors. And then the mighty warriors have a lifestyle of intimacy with God. Have lifestyle intimacy with God. Intimacy is talking about love. You cannot be intimate with somebody without love. If you are intimate with somebody seemingly without love, that is misusing each other, that is having another agenda rather than love. So when we are in love with God, we want to be intimate with God. We want to be with God all the time. We want to be uh, spending time with Him in His Word. We are reading His Word. We are, we are eating His Word. We are contemplating His Word. We are thinking about His heart, which is the Word of God. We are thinking about His desire, which is the Word of God. We want to think about all the time about God, about Him. We want to be intimate with God. 
And in fact, He's, giving us, he's given us His Holy Spirit to live in us. What does it mean? It means that we can be intimate with Him anytime. Hallelujah. Lifestyle of intimacy of God. When you are intimate with God, definitely you love to pray. It's an automatic thing. You love to praise and worship God. Even when you are driving, you are doing something, you are cooking, words of, uh, words of uh, uh, songs of praise, songs of worship will come out from your mouth. Psalm, adoration to God. When you are driving, when you are lying down, when you are talking to your children and talking to your spouse, you talk about God. And then love to do an intercessory prayer. You always think about others also because you love God. Automatically, you love others. And some, sometimes you, 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 you remember your friends, you remember your family, and then you, you bring them up in your prayers. You are becoming mighty warriors who are always, always uplifting prayers to God. That is the lifestyle of the mighty warriors. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And finally, on this rebuilding tabernacle of David, what is the will of God? Yeah? The will of the Father. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, this is Matthew 28, Verse 19 to 20, yeah? All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So what is the will of the Father. This verse is always referred to as the Great Commission. This always refers to the Great Commission. You know, go, preach, make disciples, baptize, and teach them. Let me just speak, uh, 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 especially on this on this verse. Yeah, there are uh, four verbs in that uh, verses: go, make disciples and baptize, and teach. In the original Greek word, go, baptize, and teach, they are in the participle verb. And make disciple is more to the, to the imperative verb, our imperative verb. So what does it mean? The meaning of go, baptize, and teach, they are the verb that is supporting the main verb. What is the main verb? Make disciples. Go, preach, baptize, and teach, they are all important. But they are important in supporting the main verb, which is make disciples. So the main key in these verses, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, that we are making disciples of the nations, of the people. Yes, we can go and preach the gospel. We can baptize and teach them. But we have to make sure that they are becoming disciples of God. That is the great commission. It's not just we are telling them, we are praying for them, but we are making sure we're praying also, we are telling them also that they may become disciples. And after they become disciples, they are going to make other disciples. That's how it works. That is the will of the Father. That is the great commission. Yeah? that we are making disciples for God. Hallelujah. So this is uh, the summary of that. Rebuilding the tabernacle of David is a preparation for the third Pentecost. Third Pentecost. To sweep through the earth. And the great harvest through our Lord Jesus Christ, great commissions, it shall be fulfilled. Now, let me just recap a bit, yeah? So, we are uh, having a great promise, exceedingly great and precious promise of God. And one great promise that we are having and then we are waiting now is that we are rebuilding the tabernacle of David. Mighty warriors have lifestyle, pray, praise and worship corporately day and night. Yeah? And do the will of the Father this age. So this is to be achieved. This to be accomplished is by 
the coming of the third Pentecost. Why the third Pentecost? What is the third Pentecost? So the Great Commission, the first that we are just talking about, rebuilding the tabernacle of David, it is going to be uh, launched, I would say, is going to be uh, uh, waiting for what? Waiting for this, third Pentecost. So what is third Pentecost? Third Pentecost, the first one is the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit now like never before. Like never before. So we need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's the Holy Spirit will convict, that can convict people to believe in Christ. And it is the Holy Spirit that can make disciples. We just do our job, we evangelize, we teach them, we baptize them, and we go around the world and preach the gospel. But it is Christ, it is the Holy Spirit that can turn them into believers. And we need the Holy Spirit also so that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will rise up a new generation, will rise up people who will go and preach the gospel. Second one, it is also the greatest and the last harvest before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe, our church believe, our pastors believe, that the greatest and the last harvest is going to happen soon. And it's going to happen when the third Pentecost is coming. When God is pouring, outpouring His Holy Spirit to us all, then Jesus will come. Don't you love that? Most of the time I pray that, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. It's not that I want to die, no, because I long to be in His presence and see His face and be with Him, just worshipping Him all the rest of the ages. We are going to stay with Him in heaven forever and ever. That's what we're going to do in heaven. Yeah? Not be married or get married in heaven. <laughs> There's no marriage in heaven. But we are going to withstand His presence. Enjoy His presence in heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The third thing, oh sorry, I'm going to, to quote from T.L. Osborne. He says this, There is only one purpose of Pentecost. What is that? is to effectively evangelize lost souls. We need that Pentecost so that we can evangelize people. We have the power to do that. The Bible says in Acts 1, 8 says that, you will receive power, said Jesus, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. Hallelujah. We need that Pentecost. Let's keep praying for the third Pentecost, beloved. Let's keep praying for that, that the Holy Spirit will be fall upon you, your family, and your friends, and everybody surround you. Hallelujah. And the third one, Pentecost is the awakening of Jeremiah generation filled with the Holy Spirit, crazily in love with Jesus, hate sin, and winning souls. So there's going to be a new, young generation. This is called a Jeremiah generation. Generation who loves God, crazily in love with God and hates sin. And then they are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and with the filling of the Holy Spirit, they are going to go and preach the gospel. They are going to go and win souls for Christ. They are going to make more disciples and disciples make more disciples and that's how that harvest is going to happen. It starts with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Every people, especially on this Jeremiah generation. Young people, receive this. Receive this. Receive this. Ask for it every day. Don't be skeptical. We know that God is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. And before that, He's going to outpour His Holy Spirit. It's going to happen anyway. But the question is this. Are you, am I, going to take part in that or not? It's going to happen, whether you don't want it or not, but it's going to happen and we want that we also taking part in that. Hallelujah. Jeremiah generation, rise up and receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Fourth, and the third Pentecost will be birthed in Indonesia. That is the prophecy. Cindy Jacobs, the prophet, already prophesied that the third Pentecost shall come and it will start in Indonesia. Hallelujah. 
Are you not proud of that? Yeah, I am very proud of that. That is going to start in my country. And it will move to nation from east to west and finally end up back in Jerusalem where the first Pentecost started. Hallelujah. It will start in Indonesia. Let's keep praying for that. Beloved, we are in English service. We are believing this, that English service is going to be a place, heavenly place for all nations. And we believe that there are many people from this English service that we have are going to be sent to many places or even abroad, to nations, to be used by God as His tools, as His instruments for the spreading of the gospel. Join us. Come to English service. Be with us. And we are going to pray together. We are going to be a uh, disciple together when we are going to do things together for God, for His glory, for the coming of the Pentecost. Hallelujah. And the last one, uh, the third Pentecost will fulfill and complete the great commission before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Great commission. People will hear the gospel. People will come to believe in Jesus. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will empower people of God, will empower the Jeremiah generation. And we will go to all places, to all nations, and many people will come to Christ. And the Great Commission shall be completed. That's when Jesus Christ will come. Hallelujah. So that is the fourth one. That is the promise of God, the exceedingly great and precious promise of God. That's how we perceive, that's how we see, view the Word of God. That is number four. The fifth one, or before that, let me just uh, read the quote from Mr. Clendenen. Clendon the only thing necessary to reach the Word for gospel is people full of the Holy Ghost, full, full, full with the Holy Spirit. Because like I said before, I recorded Acts 1.8, Jesus said that you shall, we shall receive power when what? When Holy Spirit come upon us. Pray for this, that you are and I be filled with the Holy Spirit and we are going to be used by God for His great commission. And the fifth one, we view the Word of God as God Himself. I'm quoting John 1.1 1, 1 again. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with, with God and the Word was God. It's God Himself. The way we see the Bible, the way we see the Word of God, we should really take it seriously when we read the Word of God. We should take it seriously that it is God Himself. It is Jesus our Lord Himself. So when we value, when we honor, when we appreciate the Word of God as God Himself, we are going to be serious in reading the Bible. We are going to be serious in interpreting the Bible. We are going to be serious when we are sharing the sermon. We are sharing the Word of God. If we are thinking that the Word of God is God Himself, you're not going to use the Word of God for your own benefit. You're not going to interpret the Word of God so that you can mention your aiming at somebody at, when you are preaching. When we are valuing the Word of God as God Himself, we are going to honor the Word of God highly. We are going to give the utmost appreciation and honor because we are viewing the Word of God as God Himself. When we meet with the Word of God, means we are meeting with the Almighty God, who is able to keep us and bless our lives. It is He. So faith also like that. When we see the Word of God, yeah, and then we hear the, we hear the Word of God, and then we believe that, as if God directly speaks to us then faith arises within us and then we are moved by that faith and see miracles shall happen. Hallelujah. The Word of God has the power to create everything from nothing because the Word of God is God Himself. Amen. Amen. God created all from nothing into something by His worth. And let me just add to this, beloved. We are created in the image of God. So our words 
is powerful also. We can create with our words and we can also destroy with our words. We can build people up with our words or we can destroy, ruin people's life by our words. We can build our children to become men and women of God or we can destroy or build our children to become somebody which is against the word of God by our words. Be careful with your words. Be careful. If we are given jobs and we have jobs, we have earnings and we go to office, we always complain about the traffic to go to the office. We complain about our boss. We complain about our job. You see, we say all those negative things. That's why we don't enjoy it. Why not do it the other way? Just give thanks and being grateful and then even speak blessings to the boss that you don't like, probably the boss that probably is not very good to you, but you keep blessing them. Even I believe by doing that, it can change them. It can change the situation. It can change your boss. But at least when we do and speak good things, speak blessings, speak, speak positive things, it will already change your heart first that you are going to enjoy that. Or maybe sometimes ago that we are always telling bad things to our children. We tell them that they, are, they cannot do anything. They tell them that they are stupid. We tell them that they are weak and on, on and on and on. And then probably they have grown up to be somebody like what we have said to them. Our words is powerful. Be careful. We don't speak words that actually a lie. We don't gossip. Before it destroys anybody, it, it first destroys you and me when we speak bad things. Hallelujah. So, beloved, the word of God is powerful. It's God himself. Let's value the word of God. Let's appreciate the word of God, the highest that we can give him. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for today that we can listen to your word. We have discussed many perspectives or the way we see the word of God. Lord, I pray that your children, all of us, may view the word of God properly, correctly. That the word of God is you, yourself. And the word of God is full with exceedingly great and precious promise of God. The promise that you are going to come soon. The promise that you are going to outpour your Holy Spirit on earth, Lord. The word of God is our source of faith. The word of God is our life manuals. If we just follow the guidance of the, whole, the, the Holy Bible, the Holy Word of God, we know that we are going to do things right. Lord, bless your children, I pray. Bless your children. Let the Word of God reside in each and every heart of your children right now. Bless them. Deliver them. Restore them. By your words. Heal them. Send your word and heal your children. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the honor, all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And all together say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy Sunday and God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. We're about to take part in our Holy Communion today. Brothers and sisters, let us come with the right heart. Before we take part in this Holy Communion, let us remember that we are doing this in remembrance of God's mercy, of God's love, that He died for you and for me on the cross. He died for you and for me to wash away all our sins, all our curse, so that we don't die, but shall live for His glory. Let us just close our eyes and let us just come to God with the right manner today. 
We are doing this in remembrance of God. So let us come to Him and be at peace with God, beloved. Be at peace with God. And be at peace with others. And be at peace with yourself. Just open up your hearts. If God is reminding you of the things that we have done in the past week, let us just confess our sins to God, our transgressions, and let Him restore you. And if God reminds you of the things that you have done to others and what others have done to you, let's just be at peace with others. Convey forgiveness and receive forgiveness from God. Ask for forgiveness and be at peace with yourself. And we know that sometimes the mistakes that we have done in the past is haunting us. But if God has forgiven you, you can also forgive yourself. Let's just take a short moment, maybe just 20 seconds, 30 seconds, just come to God and open up your heart. We are doing this respecting God, honoring God while we are being reminded of the cross of His love. Father God, I pray for your children as we are taking part in this Holy Communion today. I pray that you heal us. You heal your children. You restore us. You transform your children. Let the peace of heaven be upon you. Let the joy of heaven be upon you. Thank you, Lord. And I pray as we take part in this Holy Communion, even miracles shall happen to your people. Healings shall happen. Restoration shall happen. And blessings shall be granted upon your people. Thank you, Lord. We are ready for the Holy Communion. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Let us lift the bread high to him. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved saints of God, isn't the bread that we broke and partake is our fellowship and communion with the body of Christ Jesus? Amen. Let us take it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now let us lift up the cup high to him also. Hallelujah. In the same manner, he also took, pack, the, took cup after supper, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Beloved saints of God, isn't this cup upon which we give thanks is our fellowship and communion with the blood of Christ Jesus? Amen. Let's drink it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the body broken for us. Thank you for the blood shed for us. Thank you, Lord, that we are already healed. By the stripes of Jesus, we are already healed. Our sins were washed away. And we know that heaven awaits us. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for your children again. Heal your children. Restore your children. Bring blessings to your children. Thank you, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hi everyone, uh, where to say, people watching at home, just want to say greetings from New Zealand. Uh, I'm Pastor Kim and uh, we're just going to come together. Let's just agree and uh, let's declare and let's just pray for the nations. You know, when our prayers go up, God hears them and he releases from heaven. He sends his angels, he sends the spirit of God, he begins to move on behalf of our prayers. And let's all just really agree and let's just pray together and uh, let's just touch heaven. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Kiyama sakara busukara basai. Ninde sahai mando sukara basandere kiyama sakara basai. Father God, we just lift up your name. Father God, we lift up and we just glorify your name. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. Father God, we thank you that you, your name is above every government, is above every virus, is above every sickness, is above every disease. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, that the world breathes and has its breath through you, Lord God. And Father, we just come before you, Lord God. Father, we lift up the nation of Indonesia. Father, we lift up, Lord God, into your very presence in heaven. We lift up the nations of India, of Philippines, of Afghanistan, Nigeria, Lord God, the Netherlands, Australia. Father, we lift up all of these nations before you, Lord God. And Father, we ask for your grace. Lord God, we ask for your mercy. Jesus, I just ask that you will come upon the governments, that the Spirit of God would move upon the governments, Lord God. Father, release that gift of leadership. Father, release creativity, release strategies, Lord God. Father God, we ask for the scientists, for the economists, Lord God, for the healthcare workers, Lord God, for the teachers, Father. Lord, we thank you for an outpouring of your grace, of your mercy, of your wisdom, Lord God. Father God, of your power to work in these situations, Lord God. Father, we release peace upon the nations. Father, we release your peace. Father God, that in these challenging times, that there would be peace, Lord God, in families. There would be peace in the government. There would be peace on the streets, Lord God. Father, there would be peace between the neighbors. Lord God, that there would be a grace. There would be a faith. There would be a hope, Lord God, that would rise up. Father, there would be a unity that would rise up in us, Lord God. And Father, we just release the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the protection of the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you that Jesus Christ, Lord God, the blood of the Lamb, Father God, surround every person, Father God, and our families in different nations of the world, Lord God, our families here in Indonesia. Father, we thank you that blood of Jesus surround them and protect them, protect their finances, protect their mental health, Lord God. Father God, protect their physical body from illness, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father, that blood of Jesus, Father God, Father, that con- conquers sin, that conquers sickness, that conquers death, that conquers disease. I mean, thank you, the blood of Jesus surround us and protect us, Lord God. Father, we just praise you, and Lord God, we agree, Father God, for the nations to come together, for the nations to be in unity. Father God, for them to serve each other and to love each other, and Lord God, to work together, Father God, for, for, for the good of this season that we've come into right now. We thank you, Father. We lift up your name. Lord Jesus, we exalt you, and we praise you, Lord God. Father, we thank you that you are our deliverer. And Lord God, I thank you that you're delivering us, Lord God. Father, you're delivering us, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you that you're delivering us from this season, Lord God. Father God, to be triumphant and victorious. Father, we just pray for Pastor Widio. Father, we thank you this church being a channel of blessing in this season. Lord, we ask you to bless them, bless the leadership of the church, bless their decisions. Father, we just pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. Now, let us lift up your hands, open up your hearts, and receive the blessings. Our Lord Jesus Christ loves you and me so very much that he will bless you, that he will keep you. That our Lord Jesus will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the grace and abundant blessings from our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones today until Jesus Christ comes again even throughout eternity forever and ever in Jesus mighty name hallelujah amen 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 happy sunday and god bless you